perhaps not playing at their best the pies at the moment, but they are back in the mix. And the man that has masterminded that, <laughs> the real genius behind the brains trusted Collingwood, is a very valued member of the AFL Insider team, Rodney Ead. Good evening, Rocket. Jason, Jason, Jason. <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. I'll pay you back one day. You got hey. some uh, tests this week. With yes. your, we spoke earlier about your um, injury list. I mean, now Reed's uh, out again, and obviously Swan's out as well. But, but Reed's a significant out, isn't he, with your structure, with the, the players you've got already missing? Yeah, it is. Um, obviously, Chris Tarrant played on the on the week in the BFL, but yeah. we won't play him. Yeah, uh, okay. Nathan Brown as well. Um, he's out. So, obviously, tall defenders, and Reed's probably our best tall defender. There's no doubt. Also, so you think? Last year. So you think Tarrant's what? Just still a week or two short of a? Yeah, yeah. He. Um, Obviously played in round two, um, and and he got a corky at training that week. So yep. whether that contributed to hurting his uh, um, hurting his calf that that week, we're not too sure. So yep. we're just at his age. We've just got to make sure he gets enough work into him. Yep. We don't rush him back. And uh, if, you know, if that means it hurts us on Saturday night, well, that does. There's no problem with that. What about some of the younger guys? Have really stepped up, haven't they? I think the side bottoms continued hmm. again. Beams, Willingham, yeah. all these guys seem to have loved that challenge. Of yeah, yeah, I think when Bawley went down, people have thought about yeah. our contested ball yeah. inside because he's such a hard nut. But a, 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 as you said, side bottoms really stepped up this year. Beams has been a real, re you know, he's been a real revelation, really, because yeah. he was probably playing that high half forward role um, mm. in the past. But he's gone into the, in, into the centre square and done exceptionally well. Uh, Sinclair's done a really good job at at, at half forward for us and. Uh, that Jared Wellingham as well, as you said. Yeah, no, they're uh, still, you're under the pump with injuries, but you still look very good with these young blokes coming through. I'm really keen to talk to you about stats tonight. I think at different stages we get statistical overload. You know, we've got contest possession, uncontested, loose ball gets, hard ball gets, inside 50s, def uh, rebound 50s, pressure acts, clearances, <laughs> you name it. And at, at times people get confused by all the numbers we throw at them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, from a club perspective, not necessarily from Collins' perspective, but you know which way um, the game is trending, which way clubs focus on particular numbers, you know, and you as a coach would have had your favourites as well. What are the ones that mean the most to you? I think probably in order the recipe of success, though, let me take that as a base, yep. I think really you need to be able to win the ball. I, yeah. I think that's the, that's the main thing about our game, isn't it? I, I mean, some people say the defence is the cornerstone, and it probably is. But you really need to win the ball, and I think that I think the contest is the most important thing. I think you have a look at Adelaide; they're getting some numbers there, or Essendon get some numbers there. They want to win the ball first. If you can win the ball first, then you can actually control the game. So that, that has to be a contested ball. Obviously, it's up there. I think clearances now is becoming more and more um, in the game. It's becoming more and more structured around that. Um, so if you can win that, it gives your forwards a chance. So I, I think they're the two most important ones as far as winning the footy. Well, it's uh, funny because Mick Mulhouse always built his back six first and then the game plan yeah, evolved around that. Yeah. Paul Ruse was always defence. Yeah. Ross Lyon is defence first. Yeah. And, and 12 months ago, I think it was uncontested possession started to become a big number, but now we've gone in the space of 12 months yeah. back to contested possession. Yeah, I think, um, I, I, I think defence is your cornerstone, but if, you, if that's your number one element, I think we're actually, actually giving the ball to the opposition, and then you've got to do something to cause a turnover. And that, that's fine, some teams maybe think that, but if you can win the footy and control it, I, I think that's the most important thing, have, part of our game. And I don't think that's changed from you, Doc. Yeah. Yeah. Have you gone away, has it gone away from time in forward half, or is that still a major indicator? Yeah, I, I think teams look at that. Yeah. I, I, think, uh, I think that's an element as well, being able to keep, and that, that's, people can say that's offence, but it can actually be defence as well, yeah. so it actually sends your structure around to keep your ball in your forward 50 as well. But teams have become better at actually getting the ball out of that. Yeah. Will become non-dangerous, yeah. um, so they'll win the ball out, and they'll have a structure forward of that, uh, forward of that back pocket situation, yeah. and be able to take the ball out of bounds, and then and then they'll have a throw, and then they'll be able to reset. So I think the last two years the press was really big. Yeah. It's not as and, uh, I think teams are still doing it, mm. but it's not as effective as it has been because teams have worked their way through the offense is working their way yeah. through that. There's Which no is doubt. the one stat someone could come up to you with, and you'd say, "Mate, chuck that in the bin, will you?" <laughs> what means nothing to you, Mr. <laughs> I think every stat has got to be linked with something else. Like, you can have centre square clearances, but if you can kick the ball forward five metres, yeah. or, or just gets out on the ground, you've got, a, you've, got an extra play, you've got an extra defender, they win it and score the other end. I yeah. mean, I think, it's the, I think every stat has to be linked with something else. It's the same with tackling. I mean, you can have 100 tacklers, but you might not have the ball all day. So of yeah. course you're going to have more tackles. So yeah. I think every stat needs to be, I think every stat can be, you know, there's something gleaned out of it, but yep. it needs to be linked with another two or three stats at the same time. All good. Well, I reckon the umpires are just about the first people to get criticised week in, week out, but we're not quite sure exactly what they have to go through on a game-by-game -game basis. David King has gone down to the umpires' game review and sat down for an in-depth discussion and look at exactly what these blokes do. And I'll tell you what, it's fascinating stuff. <laughs> pretty tough. Split-second decisions to, to sum up a, 
a lot of things. Is it a high tackle? Is it pushing them back? We, we can't let the game go. We can't choose to, you know, not run as hard in certain situations. We're going to be up and about. You've got to be able to see the, the footy all the time, and you've got to be able to see the bloke's head who's going after the footy all the time. So if you drop your concentration for a sec, you'll miss the one. Here we are down at the umpire's headquarters at Fizzy Park, going through an umpire's review with Rowan Soares, Chris Donlan, Justin Smith and Shane Stewart. They're going to take us through the Collingwood versus Western Bulldogs game Friday night at Eddie Head Stadium. Just put it with the Short air, doesn't yeah. it? Good message of play so far. Allow the play on quickly. Locked out the tackle. No fire on. Fire opportunity. So he had an opportunity. But leading up to it, knocked out the tackle, which is fire. It's not prior opportunity. He's had an opportunity, pulls the ball back. Everyone's happy that's a prior opportunity. Well done. With a long ball, now the dogs have got numbers and coming across oh, hard was hard to get over that. And then late. Well, that third spoil, that third spoil into Cloak, who was in the market. <laughs> Cloak, I, I would have thought this is just the automatic free kick from the front on the contact. Well, this is an interesting one. Did you see that one? This on the day. I was aware of Hargrove, and yeah. I thought he was, if there was going to be some illegal contact, it would be from him. So I, I sort of honed in on him a bit, and I got enough of a view that I could see that he was looking at the ball, and I felt that he hit the ball, so yeah. in that case, it, yeah, play on. Yeah, I think he's always got his eyes on the footy, he never looks at the man, he's always going to the football, he clearly makes contact with the ball, and uh, yeah, I don't think it's a marking interference, he's had eyes for the football all the way, and uh, play on is a quick call. Maxwell's handball in dispute. Murphy taking the ball, and then we see that the tackle slip down. Does it impede him? Going back, could have he got away from uh, Maxwell? Maxwell grabs him by, by the foot. It has to be a free kick once he grabs it. He can't do anything. He can't run away from Maxwell. He needs to blow the whistle. Even if handball, you want to call it an advantage, he's got that, that option. But he clearly grabs him by the foot. He needs to pay him a, a trick. Beans to Pendlebury. With Justin Sherman in trouble. Kick inside the ball at 50 doors. Can Dawes get his hands up? Yeah. All he does is play the man. He doesn't allow Dawes to contest the ball. So, for a just head position, which we have, yeah. but a two out contest, when one player's got hands up for footy, the other hasn't got any hands up, then have to become a free kick. The umpire's worked hard here. There's no way that he can adjudicate this decision from the mid zone. The mid zone's pushed back, he needs to have pushed across a little bit more and try and take these two players out of the equation to have a better view of the contest here. So it, it's backing out quickly, getting back inside the, the 50 and probably pushing across a little bit further. Watching it earlier, if you, you see it earlier, you can pick it up as opposed to if you get this late, well, who hold, who initiate the hold? And, and that, that's exactly so. It's early observation inside the end zone. That's why we need to keep pushing them back quickly for those types of decisions. It's really not unlike footy clubs. They will take a very close look at all the incidents that happen throughout the course of the game and analyse them. You've got to understand that they're making between 3,000 and 4,000 decisions a game, or not non-decisions, if that makes sense. They've got an 84% decisional accuracy per game. 95% of all bounces, we whinge about how many bad bounces we see, 95% of them are contestable by both Ruckman uh, the tackling stats have gone through the roof. It used to be 53 a game 12 years ago. It's now 150 plus a game, so they've got to adjudicate on all of those. They pay about 34 free kicks a game. There's 28 centre bounces per game, 41 boundary throws, a couple of 50 metre penalties. All that sort of stuff goes through it. And let's not forget, they cover 12 kilometres per game. These are the field umpires, and the boundary umpires, 15k a game. That's a hell of a lot of running, so I think you've got to cut these blokes a little bit of slack and say, that's as tough a job as anyone's got in the game. Oh, the, uh, yeah, for sure, and it is a tough game to umpire. There's so yeah. much grey in our game, and there's so much left, really, I know they're trying to make it black and white for them, but it's interpretation, it happens yeah. so quickly. Mm. Uh, I mean, they do make some howls, there's no doubt about that, uh, but I think... Uh, Generally, there's umpires don't actually make the difference in the result of the game. How did you feel coming away from that thing? 
Um, look, there's a few times there, Jason, you want to say, oh, come on, you're not serious. <laughs> you're not serious, you blokes. <laughs> How'd you miss that one? But, um, look, I was surprised by the level of professionalism. I'll, I'll say it again, but they, they sat there and they scrolled through the, the, uh, the visual replay, if you like, and went through all their decisions that were the grey area. Uh, decisions and then they got a written uh, assessment on how they went and they went and obviously trained after that. They did some boxing which is pretty frightening stuff. They were very good, <laughs> very good in the boxing ring. Is that I think you'll be uh, sarcastic, King. Is that really? <laughs> that wooden bruise are great. You said no one didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was good to see. I've got to say and I reckon everyone from club land should yeah. go and have a look and just, just get an idea on how hard yeah. it actually is to do what they do because I think at lower levels that's a real problem, you know, and they're, they're trying to encourage, you know, people who have fallen out of the system as players to become umpires, and it's got a flow-on effect, so yeah. I think we've got to back off a little bit on the umpires generally. Absolutely. We'll show you a little bit more next week, but they do a tough job, and next time you're thinking about giving them a rip, just, you know, take into account the fact that it is one of the toughest jobs in the game.